Welcome back. This is episode 10 of the Griffin Restoration Project. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the bias oscillator, now that it's repaired, which is also part of the erase oscillator, which is also repaired, because those pots got burned out due to leaky caps. Well, we're going to set this up on the scope. We're going to take a look at the amplitude of the bias oscillator. We're also going to look at the frequency, making sure that all of that's correct, because we can test it now that it operates. And this is how it looked. The next thing, get the scope fired up and check some of these uh, erase voltages and bias settings. I just want to go back to the same places that I've been before. Now, one of these channels was not working because some of the pots were damaged. And so I want to go to a known good signal, which is on this Since Jones connector back here on pin seven. That's 155 volts peak to peak. Boy, that is dead on 75 kilohertz. One channel, 65 kilohertz. So I'm just curious now if the dummy load changes that frequency. No, changing the amplitude. I just want to try to get these all balanced. Now let's check the uh, min stereo right there. It's, it's, that says 151.4 on that channel and 151.6. Beautiful thing. So let's see where we are on the bias. I don't know where the bias levels need to be because I don't have a particular piece of tape on here right now to set those biases, but there's absolutely no smoke. Now that we've got all of these components replaced and everything seems to be fine, we're gonna go ahead and take some readings. And there we have it. That is the bias voltage on the record head. You're never gonna really see the audio. The bias is a signal that is so strong that the audio is not going to be visible on the scope just yet. But I'm gonna show you a way to be able to actually see that by going earlier into the circuit where with a capacitor, they are coupling the bias and the audio signal together. That is the bias frequency, but on the audio side of a capacitor that's connecting the two. It's basically combining the bias with the audio. Channel one right now has a peak to peak value of 1.6 volts. So that is actually measuring 73.85 kilohertz. So I know that that is the bias frequency, but that is on the audio side of these capacitors. So let's just drop that back down again. Okay, get out of that. And let's apply some audio to this. Just make sure that we can actually see it. Okay, well, there's audio. What we're seeing on the scope right now is channel one, which is in record mode. So the waveform is actually thicker because there is a 70 kilohertz sine wave that is on that audio waveform. And I know that's audio waveform because I can change the frequency of that audio waveform. So I know that that's the audio portion. I typically use 400 hertz, okay? I think the book called for 700 hertz. Not sure why. If they picked 700, there had to have been a reason for it, probably because that is the center of the frequency response curve for the electronics as designed. I'm using 400 hertz because I know what 400 hertz looks like, and it's going to be familiar territory. So there you have it. <clears throat> now, just to be sure, I want to show you something here. I'm going to just increase my time base. Now, I'm at one millisecond right now. So, but as I increase this, you can see that the bias is there, okay? It's not very large, okay? As a matter of fact, uh, let's just do this, okay? Uh, I wanna measure peak to peak from channel one, okay? And that is five volts, peak to peak. That's what I would expect to see. And obviously everything here is just behaving as it should be, um, I'm actually, fairly pleased with that. I'm going to go ahead and stop the deck. That's going to just simply revert back to audio without the uh, fuzzy parts attached to it. Now, I will point out that the record volumes on this RP unit are wide open, okay? 
they expect you to do a test and calibration with the pots wide open. I get that because that means that there is actually no additional resistance in the audio path through the circuit in order to make sure that the levels are supposed to be balanced. I do want to point out a couple of things with the record volumes all the way open, okay, and tone present, but I'm going to go ahead and switch these switches to the record monitor so that we can actually see the levels going into the deck. All right, so that's not exactly zero dB. There is a calibration on the RP unit, and those calibration adjustments are right here. That's one channel, and that's the other channel. And what those are gonna do is actually adjust the record level going through the electronics to be combined with bias on its way out. I always like to go low at first and then gradually bring the meter up rather than going past zero and bringing it down. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. The manufacturer has already determined what value of resistor is needed for the meter to register zero dB with the proper record level going to the head. You can get to those resistors and change them out, but the procedure is, in order to get it correct, you have to record on the deck first, get the levels set properly so that the deck is performing to specifications, and then you change those resistors in order to make the meters read zero. All things being equal, this is the way that it would have to be calibrated in order to set up the record. But what I'd like to do right now is just go ahead and button this up. If I need to make any other kind of electronic adjustments, I'll be able to get to them with the pots on the top of the chassis. So I really don't need to be in here anymore. It's been running for a number of hours and at no time have I let the smoke out of any of the components that are in here. So I'm happy. Uh, the fire department is happy. They didn't have to be called and everything is cool. So let's get this buttoned up and put a tape on there and see what it sounds like. Isn't that awesome? I actually got this thing to behave exactly the way it was supposed to. And I cheated a little bit. You know, I, I basically preset the pot before I put it in there. And, you know, then I just had to find room for it. In the next episode, I'm actually going to go forward and, and button this thing up. That's the plan. But, you know, no good deed goes unpunished at least the intent thereof, because what ends up happening is, is that I get totally confused because left is left is left is left, except when it's right. And that's wrong. I hope you liked what you've seen. And if you do, give us a thumbs up. All right. And subscribe. You know, I don't, you know, if you're already a subscriber, man, you got my thumbs up. All right. Comments. I loved your comments and we're replying to those. It, it, again, it just gives us a sense of what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. We're going to fix that too. All right. Although it's not on the list just yet. Patreon subscribers, thank you so much for contributing. It's helping us out. And in order to help you out, we're going to provide you with detailed episodes and all of the uh, documentation that we have available from all the projects that we've been working on and merchandise. It's going to become available to Patreon subscribers and it's all for you guys. See you in the next one.